Hey guys, this video is a little bit special and because I came across this question uh, today in my uh, interview with Google. Uh, so let's walk through it. And this is a big code number 341. Flatten nested this uh, iterator. So uh, let's, let's dive in uh, to the example. So you can see um, the element in the list it can be uh, the, a list, or it can be a number, or it can be, um, well, this one is a list inside another list. So it's a nested list. That's why it's called nested list. So we don't know how many layers of a list that it's going to be. Um, and then what we need to do is to output a uh, flattened list. Uh, that's why it's called flattened. Um, so immediately, you can see that um, we can use a recursion to solve this problem, right? Because we can peel off each layer within the list, and then we can um, solve. Um, we we can uh, flatten the list by by doing that. And um, this question was asked by uh, Facebook, Amazon. I don't see the name of Google in here, but actually, I was asked by this question today. Um, with Google. Anyway, uh, let's walk through it. So, um, one way to solve this is to flatten the list in the init function. So, this is an object design question. And uh, we have to write three functions once init, uh, which initialized the object. The next one is the next, which will return the next. Uh, um, next integer in the nested list and uh, has next is a return the boolean that if there is something in the next uh, spot, uh, position and then we return the true otherwise we return the false so um, let's look at the code uh, together uh, so the init how can we flatten it as I said before uh, we will use a uh, recursion method and uh, I have a recursion function name of flattener and then uh, we we will input a given list, and for all the elements in a given list, so the element can be either a integer or is a list, right? So uh, in this case, this is a list, and this is an integer, and this is a list. And in this case, this is integer, this is a list, and we fill this list, and this is integer, and this is another list, right? So the element can be either an integer or a list in for all the elements in the given list. If the element that we're looking at is an integer, and then we up, uh, extract the integer from the element and then append to the to the uh, flattened list, which uh, is a uh, becomes a property um, of this object. Otherwise, we push back into the flattener. And then do that recursively. And then how we do that? You just uh, extract the list by using the get list function, which is a uh, a default function that has been written. So we don't have to worry about this uh, functions. So we, uh, the it has a get integer, also get list, also is integer. So this is all the default function that we don't have to worry about. Okay. And then after after that, we uh, push it back to the flattener. And then and then and, and then deal with it again using the recursion uh, method, and um, to trigger it running at the beginning, so we push in the uh, the the input argument nested list to the flattener, and um, also we keep track of the position because this is sort of look like a length list, but it's not quite because we know uh, there's a position that's pointing to uh, the spot. So the initial position is a zero, and uh, this is how we initialize the position. And I was paying a little bit uh, attention to this uh, testing uh, method. So the code will be tested using the following pseudo code. So uh, we have we given a, a result and uh, while uh, the iterator uh, has something in, in the next position and then we just append it to the, to the result and then we return the, the list at the end, okay? And um, the next one, uh, the, the next function, what we need to do is to uh, return 
uh, the number at the position, right? So basically we first we save the number by looking at the position of uh, the flattened list that we dealt with previously. And then uh, we update the position because we have looked, we have already looked at that, the guy, the guy, and then we push the position to the next spot. And then we return the, the saved uh, item to be returned. And uh, also the has next function. And then we check uh, if the position is it less than or equal to uh, the length minus one because it's the index that we are talking about. And why is so? Why is uh, has next? It's not uh, position plus one. Is why is self dot position? Why is not self dot position plus one? It's because already we already push it the position to the next spot right after we call this function right every time we call this function we push this guy to the next part and that's why we just need to check that otherwise we if we plus one again we'll push right two spots forward and this is not what we want uh, let's run that and run it again so um as you can see uh it's pretty efficient uh the number changes and for uh, time complexity, and uh, for time complexity is a big over n uh, plus l. So n is the total number of integers within the nested list, and l being uh, the total number of lists. And d is the maximum nested depth and the maximum number of lists inside each other. So uh, there's a note in here. I'm not sure I understand. So the maximum depth, depth of the nesting uh, does not impact the time complexity. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I understand this because let's say if the if uh, there is only one number in the list and there are um, 100 lists outside, and would that not impact in the speed? Because I I would have to uh, in that case uh, I would have to call uh, this flattener uh, function 100 times, right? Because you keep, keep calling this guy over 100 times. So I'm not sure you understand this. Uh, the next function is um, a big old one. Uh, that makes sense because just a lookup. And uh, also it has next and it's big old one. And that makes sense as well. It's just one comparison. And for uh, the space complexity is a big O of N plus D. So the D comes from the number of stack, the call stack, and that makes sense. And also, uh, also obvious is that this is obvious auxiliary uh, space of the integer. This is the length of the big of n, and that makes sense. Um, and yeah, that's so much for my solution. Um, I hope this is helpful. If it does, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. That will be a huge support. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Thank you, thank you.